Okay, thank you for coming. My name is Gary Abbott. Um, That's for me. I'm here with USA Wrestling. Uh, Ruin Gardner, our 2000 Olympic champion, bronze medalist in 2004, um, agreed to, to meet with the media today. And so uh, on behalf of Ruin, uh, we've uh, set up this opportunity. He'd like to say a, a small uh, statement or talk a little bit before he takes any questions. We're not going to be here a super long time. Ruin would rather, uh, if he's going to have more in-depth conversations, do it at a later date you know, individually with different journalists and things of that sort. He's also requested that uh, National Coach Steve Frazier uh, join us to be available to talk a little bit about his training journey and the things that brought him to, uh, you know, come to the Olympic trials to pursue another Olympic dream. So, um, that said, um, I'd like to introduce Ruben Gardner and uh, just ask him to uh, let you know his thoughts about what, what went on with his uh, uh, quest to, to come here and wrestle at the Olympic uh, trials. Well, um, thank you everybody for coming. Uh, is it quite the circumstance that I wanted to be here under? But uh, um, my journey pretty well, I think, started uh, two years ago when I tried out for the biggest loser and I got on the TV show. And that's where uh, my competitive fire kind of started uh, reigniting itself. And as I left the show last year, I realized that I had more inside of me than just losing the weight and uh, being on The Biggest Loser and trying to win the money of the TV show. But for me, it ultimately came back, and the reason I got on the show and the reason I got back into wrestling was to get my health back. And that was probably one of the most important things because for me, I felt that I was probably the healthiest when I was back wrestling, back, you know, 264 is a small weight class, but back when I was wrestling, that's when I was the healthiest, the happiest. It's when I had a lot of positive in my life, and for me, it isn't just about, you know, being a wrestler. It's about going out and, I think, being a healthier person. And that's the journey I've been on the last few years, and I'm pleased to tell you today that I'm healthy. And I know yesterday was a, a tough day for me. Um, when I was younger, I maybe have uh, pushed myself. I got to a point yesterday where I realized it probably wasn't advantageous to continue pushing myself. Uh, at the end of the day, I was within five pounds of uh, making the Olympic uh, 264 and a half pound weigh-in number. And being within five pounds, I felt a little bit uh, disappointed, but my body got to a point where it told me it's, it's time that you stop uh, pushing yourself. And eight years ago, I was on the exact same path as I was this trip, but I think the eight years removed and not being, you know, weighed in numerous times like I had in the past, I think that affected my body and ultimately, you know, my body told me that uh, it wasn't right yesterday and at that point I decided to stop and for me, you know, I could have hurt myself but it isn't about making the Olympic team. That was only a byproduct and that's part of me getting healthy and just being here and being on the stage and being part of USA Wrestling, being part of this great organization, having a chance to train the Olympic team has been something that's truly special and I think my age hopefully has made me wiser and smarter and in my choices from here to the future I want to make better choices and I think this is the reason uh, that I put the last two years of my life on hold to be able to compete here and to succeed and reach my goal and that's to be healthy and I have my health back and that's what matters. Just question. Yeah, I'd like to know who you are. That thing would love Meredith when you associate press. You had said that, uh, you know, that, that you were close and that your body was telling you that you needed to stop and you could have hurt yourself. Did, did anything happen yesterday? More specifically, that told you, hey, I'm going to stop. Well, in the morning time, you know, I've been pushing pretty hard the last few days, like any wrestler does. But in the morning time, I pushed myself for about a hard hour. And I still had six about six and a half hours before weigh-ins and at that point I just started feeling you know uncomfortable I didn't really feel good about it and I really started kind of not feeling good so at that point I said hey we gotta slow it down and then you know my body just I think was the point of just saying hey it's it's time and I remember sitting there thinking you know is it worth it is it worth it and you know I 
I didn't come here to, to prove that I'm still a woman's gold medalist. I came here to prove that I still had, I think, the, hopefully the heart of a champion. Well, I'm like to you not regret the wish this story had not become so public about you trying to get back? No. Yeah, this isn't, I kind of the biggest loser for a reason because I was foolish with my health and you know, I, I think America, you know, we need to start realizing we're accountable. And for me, you know, I feel a little setback that I didn't make a team that I didn't come back and win a medal this year, but that's not my biggest goal. My biggest goal is realizing it was 474 pounds. Yesterday it was 269 and a half pounds. That's, that's what my journey was. That's what 200 pounds I lost. And, you know, at the end of the day, Coach Frazier and everybody in that wrestling room, they knew I was bigger than a lot of the guys and I hadn't trained my body at 265 pounds. But I, I still, you know, I'm 40 years old and I, I still got a lot in my heart, you know, and I still think I have the ability to compete with anybody in the world. And I wanted to prove it here at the Olympic trials, but to a certain point, I think, you know, being realistic is more important than being optimistic. Sir, you are another spotlight for the New Seattle Kings. What do you want your role with USA Wrestling to be going forward after today? You know, hopefully Coach Frazier can utilize me in helping these guys and that was part of the reason I wanted to come back and be part of this experience because the sport gave me and so many other people here in Iowa City and Iowa, you know, in America, a, a passion to live. And so for me, you know, however I can help buyers. I called them yesterday after I decided not, you know, I still had six hours to try to make it, but it didn't make sense at that point. And, you know, I called the buyers up and I wished them the best of luck. And he told me eight years ago when I retired, he said, Ruin, I wish you didn't retire. He said, nobody pushes me, nobody challenges me. And I told him back then, nobody should have to challenge you. You should challenge yourself. And hopefully this year, the idea of me coming back is, going to get him a position where he can win a medal here at the Olympic Games. Um, I hope so. You never really know what's in the mind of a wrestler, but, um, you know, for me, <laughs> 40 year old man still wrestling with sweaty men. That's something a little bit weird. So, <laughs> you know, for, for me, yeah, my mind and my everything else. You know, I think when I retired eight years ago, you know, I retired like, yay, it's a party. Life is, you know, I didn't take the responsibility. And now, you know, I have my wife and we have the responsibility of coming out here and being committed and focusing on the future. And that's my future. And I want to be part of wrestling. I didn't quite finish the first, you know, the first answer. I want to be part of wrestling. I want to help, you know, Coach Frazier, the national team, all these guys make it. And, you know, for the last eight years, Frazier's like, you should be wrestling. These guys just don't have, they don't have the toughness. And, you know, that's, you know, I, that was my, I didn't have a lot of physical ability. I didn't have a lot of mental. I didn't have a lot of the stuff these great wrestlers did. But I outworked everybody. And in that wrestling room, if somebody's not going to work hard, they shouldn't be there. And hopefully we can bring that mystique back to, to Greco Roman wrestling. You know, we're still building that history in America. You know, this is the biggest part of why we have great Greco Roman wrestling in America. And I think the world should see. But that's what this sport's about. You know, it's not just about one wrestler winning a medal. It's about the people involved in the sport of Greco Roman love and sport for what it truly is. Mark, here's a little comment over to us. Does comeback help you find the responsibility to discover that you can't, life can't be a party at 40? Or was it something else that made you decide that or realize that? There's probably been a few moments, you know, monumental changes in my life. The night I got frostbite. You know, I survived, and at 6 o'clock in the morning, I saw the sun come up, and it was heaven. And every day was a party. Every day was like, live life to the fullest. And I wrestled and trained that way up to 2004. And after I got done wrestling, I'm like, okay, live it up, you know, and stop training. And that's when the weight started coming on. And before, it was controlled because of the, the, you know, the workouts and all the hard training. And then after that, it was still enjoy great food and not work out. And, you know, I... Instead of working out, I hey, you know, so that extra time and you know, now my beautiful wife Cammy's over here and you know, she's here, she's you know, she's helped me and 
she was there to support me getting on the biggest loser. Last you know two years, she said, Ruben, you do what you want to do. If you love the sport, go for it. You need wrestling to be healthy. I think it's, you know, I kind of separated myself from wrestling in 2004, and for me, yeah, I want to be back when I, I you know, I want to be back for the training camp this summer to help buyers get ready. I, I think wrestling is part of my ingrown DNA now, and I need it to be part of my life because without it, I think I've lost some of the purpose of my life. Mark Bader from Flow Wrestling. Oh. You said your motivation this time was more to be healthy than to make the Olympics. Like when you're in the room and you're training, are you picturing the Olympics? Are you thinking about getting healthy? Were you? My my goal was getting on that schedule. You know, people are like, oh, you know, you make weight, you're gonna win the Olympics, you're gonna do this. You know, my goal in 2000, 2004 was just to make the team. So that was my same focus now is making the team. I know if I made weight that that would be taken care of. I know that if I walked on the mat and made it through the mini tournament, I'd be okay. I know that if I walked out against buyers, I thought it would be okay because I still still think today I could beat it. And that's, you know, if you're not an Olympic champion, you don't have that confidence in yourself. And you gotta, you got to throw it out there. And if you don't have the guts to throw it out there, you're never going to step up and you're never going to be a champion. Coach Frazier, I mean, to verify that his training, uh, you were asking about what he did in the room. Uh, just your thoughts about what you saw? Well, well, first, just let me say that we're all very, very proud of Lou Algarve. He's our most decorated Jack Roman wrestler ever in our history. He won more, you know, as you, you know what his record is as far as his gold medal, his, his bronze medal, and so forth. Uh, so we're very proud of him. I was very excited that he was going to make this run. I didn't know if he could do it or not. He's, he's big. We all know when we started this uh, journey back. And um, let me tell you, this guy trained harder than any guy on our team. He put in more hours, additional hours. We practice usually twice a day. I know Rulon practice usually three times and sometimes four times a day to try to, to, uh, to prepare for this moment uh, and the London moment. So um, he worked very hard. For the last, I think he moved away in October. He moved to Austin. He moved to Colorado Springs. He went to training center in October and uh, started training full time with us at that point. Uh, and, and from that point on, he trained like a madman. Simple, since you're completely played here, when you step on the mat for the first time in your front back, how much did you weigh? And also, <coughs> any regrets about when you've done or any tapping since then? Um, well, I, I started pretty well, you know, I left the show last year, and I started off, you know, as I came home, I went and wrestled Justin Ruiz, and he's 220 pounds, and he physically was stronger than me at that point, and I'm like, whoa, you know, you're so weak, you need to condition your body, because I'm the biggest loser, I lost a lot of muscle, and so, for me, I decided to start lifting, and that's when, you know, I got bigger and stronger than I got, of course, more heavier than I really wanted to be. And then probably the one regret, you know, that I had is probably this last summer not being as accountable to my nutrition because after the biggest loser, I said, you know what, I'm just going to come back and I'm going to train hard, I'm going to start lifting, I'm going to start, you know, working hard. And I never stopped exercising the whole program, but the last few months, you know, it, it came down to me, you know, making better choices. And I've had so much support from the coaching staff, from, you know, some kids' kids, you know, Art Martori. You know, believing in me to say we got your back no matter what happens you know you have changed your life and this is a very positive thing for yourself and then you know for for what we believe in and we care about the wrestling family and that was great to have is the support that they gave me every day you know Frazier if I had a question if I had a problem you know and he's like really just you know let me know what I can do get out of your way because you still have this the twinkle in your eye and you still have an animal inside you isn't done seeing it. So for me, that was great to have that confidence from so many great coaches. Ron, if this tournament, this would have been a Jew, like normally would have helped you. Uh, I thought about that yesterday a lot. You know, <laughs> Frazier, can you take care of me? Um, you know what? You know, the date was the date was there in April a year ago. So I saw the date a year ago and I thought, you know, and and honestly you know, 2004, 
this is exactly where I was at. You know, my body was used to training and was used to, you know, working like this. You know, I, you know everybody on the heavyweights were pretty well the same. You know, two months ago I was a little bigger than the rest of the heavyweights, yes. You know, but then this last, last three weeks, I've been, this is where I've been in the past. And eight years ago it wasn't a problem for me to get down to weight. And I think that's probably the eight years that have gone by and my body not being in the wrestling shape. Wrestling shape, you know, Frazier can tell you my lungs are pretty good. You know, I never really get tired when I'm out wrestling now. But the difference is my body, I think down to the muscle, because I was looking and yesterday, you know, checking my body, my legs are shrunk, you know, a lot of the muscle, you know, that I had is, is working itself, but it just wasn't in tune where it was eight years ago. Well, I'm Brian Bukalskis, Hawkeye Insider Magazine. What's it been like to gain a new legion of fans off the show outside the wrestling world um, from your appearance on The Biggest Loser? Well, there's some that like me and some that don't. So, um, <laughs> you know, some people, you know, people call me quitters. And, you know, that hurt. It, you know, for me, it's not about victory. You know, I didn't look at the Olympics when I started this about winning medals. I looked about personal evolution. You know, I grew up, I had a brother who beat me all the way until my senior year in high school. To Nebraska, I never won an NCAA championship. I, I didn't think about gold medals as being success. For me, success was improving myself one day at a time and master my potential. That's that's what I truly considered as. And so, this comeback, you know, at the end of the day, even if I'd win a, if I had another gold medal around my neck, it would be more impressive to me than two years ago where I started to where I'm at today. You know, this weigh in yesterday was probably one of the biggest weigh ins of my life because. It truly was a starting place and finishing place. And I feel that there's still somewhat failure because I didn't make weight yesterday, but then ultimately now I have to prove myself every day. And I think that's kind of bringing accountability to my life. And people say, well, I'm the biggest loser. Why did you do that to yourself? Because you know what? I can lie to myself just like anybody else. And it's time that, that it takes some responsibility for, for all the support I've had. And it's a shame that I've forgotten sometimes how much support and how many people truly care about me. A couple more questions, sir. I'm Rick Ruggles with the Omaha World Herald. Uh, you said you weren't accountable to your nutrition last summer, and uh, you had already planned to make a comeback. So how are you going to be accountable to your nutrition in the future? Well, the last this last year, you know, as I came home, you know, I'm like, okay, lift, get strong, get big, get healthy. You know, you got to. You got to get the strength back because wrestling these 200-pound guys, I couldn't even hold. I couldn't even hold up to them. And so for me, you know, it became more about strength. And you know, being on the Biggest Loser got me to think of things differently. I don't. 280 pounds doesn't really do me any good unless I'm an Olympic wrestler. You know, after this, I should be a leaner 260, 250 pounds, but not have all the muscle mass because. You know, skydiving and rock climbing, muscle mass doesn't do you any good. You know, wrestling it does. And so for me, trimming that, you know, trimming that body down and, and exercising. I love to box. I love to run. I love to, you know, do those healthy things. The body may not be able to withstand the torture of wrestling 300-pound guys every day, but you know, if this is it for me in wrestling, I shouldn't have to. My body doesn't have to be this huge massive being. My sister's a cardiologist and she said, Rulin, two years ago, you'll be dead within five years if you don't change your life. And sleep apnea, high blood pressure, you know, all those things, congestive heart failure. You know, my sister was honest. She said, you're going to die. And that's that's an eye opener. Even though you're 39 years old, toughest guy in America, it doesn't matter, you're still going to die. Rulin, do you feel like you're a Do you feel like you're Love injuries, Miss Gia. I'm just curious. Yesterday, when your body was telling you that that was enough, um, what were your emotions like? What were sort of running through your head as your, as your body's telling you that? Dream or reality? And if you don't have reality, you can't reach your dream. And, you know, as I was sitting there contemplating what I was going to do, do I rehydrate myself and get fluid back into me or do I keep pushing it? It was a choice. And at the end of the day, it doesn't do me any good to walk out of there dead. Or to be carried out of there. For the end of the day, 
This is about being healthy. And no Olympic gold medal is going to make many healthy. Fine, last hey, question. Right, so this, is, this is for your winner. Will it look like you're a winner that you became so close? Um, you have probably the public opinion of it and, you know, feel good and the, you look where you've come from and then you have the actual reality of it. If you're looking at medals and making the team, I failed. But if you're looking at being a better, healthier, complete person, and each person has to put a value of each and, you know, a lot of these guys, they'll do anything to win that medal. And for me, it was never really about the medal. So I think at the end of the day, it was about did I obtain and did I reach my goal? That's what truly mattered to me, is that I was back. You know, when I left, you know, I left the biggest loser. I felt that I had, I was, was so much weaker because my, my body wasn't where it was at. And now, you know, I truly feel like, you know, the, you have a reset button. My life reset, eight years removed. You know, I'm 40 years old now, and, you know, thank God I have so many great friends and this great sport has helped me out. And, this isn't about me this weekend. It's about those guys who are sending to London, and I hope we put the best team out there and we go kick the Russians' butt. And, mm -hmm. you know, America has too many great wrestlers. And I think, you know, the great support that every one of you are bringing here today you know, lets everybody know, you know, this isn't about me. This is, you know, if this is Byers' turn this year at heavyweight. It's time to let him go. If it's freestyle, it's women. You know what? Wrestling, especially being here in Iowa, it's special for us to be here. And even though I'm not wrestling, you got to give these people and these wrestlers the support that they deserve because they have put their lives on hold just to follow that dream to represent America at the Olympic Games. One last question. Anyone go? So for me, for Graham with Fox Sports, um, I'm curious, what do you hope people gain is like the lesson in your story? No matter if you fail or you succeed, you know, do you learn in life and do you make better choices through your past experiences? Well, uh, we really appreciate everyone coming here. We all have a finals to cover <coughs> in a short period. Yeah, Rulon, USA Wrestling will take your requests for interviews with him. He said he'd like to talk to people more on a yeah, you know, more independent one-on-one -on -one basis uh, over the next course of the summer, really, right? I mean, we uh, want to all get back to uh, getting our Olympic team selected tonight, and uh, we really appreciate you being here. But Rulon, is not, you're not going to go out high. You're going to be able to talk to people as we move forward in your life, right? <laughs> um, tonight, maybe I'll hide a little bit. Um, <laughs> you never know. Well, I mean, so. You know, certainly, uh, you no. educated. You do talk to people later yeah, on. No, NBC, you know, they asked me to go on, I'm going to help do some of the broadcasting tonight with, you know, Byers' match and, you know, I had a chance to go in 2008 to, uh, you know, Beijing and hopefully this year I can be part of that, you know, the process of getting the national team ready and I'll be around and, you know, just you know, let Gary know and, and thank you for just being here to support this and, you know, thank you, the wrestling movement, you know, needs fans and, it, you know, we appreciate it and this great sport, you know, needs every one of our support because, as you know, Dan Gable's on the outside of this building. This is you know, kind of his house, and you pay homage when you come in and when you have the opportunity to be around influential people in all of our lives, but especially the wrestler's life, to see a commitment, you know, as Steve Frazier does, you know, these wrestlers have put their hearts and souls into this sport. And this means everything tonight for these guys that make the team, and it's special the guys that did it four more years, and they'll get on top. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.